Hello, I'm Paul at Performance Classics and um, I'm going to be making a video related to Royal Enfields today. Um, I've had a few requests actually for this, although I intended doing it anyway, to try and explain the workings of the four-speed Albion gearbox found on the uh, later British Royal Enfields and the Indian ones. Um, so if we start off by taking a look in the guts of it, in the casing we've got this. Uh, I'll put a bit of light on it just in case this is the obviously an empty gearbox shell and you can see this here that moves like that this is actually called the gear operator which is part of the selector mechanism and those notches there represent first neutral second third and fourth gears and this casing is actually broken uh, what you would actually have is this piece here and there's the spring loaded plunger that engages with the gear operator and each click you get, I think I'm done with this one now, each click you get from the gearbox when you change gear is the interaction of the notches on the gear operator and that spring-loaded plunger. So I'll move this out of the way now. And I've already got this one in the first gear position. It's quite stiff to move, but first, neutral, second, third, and fourth. And from fourth we go third, second, and I'll put it back into the neutral position there. Now you can see, well actually I'll go to first with a click. When we're in first gear, we start off with the fork of the gear operator right at the back. Now the, that engages with this, which is uh, well basically the selector fork which moves the gears, which we can see here, back and forth along the shaft. So, or shafts, there's the lay shaft, there's the main shaft, and there's the main shaft sleeve. And these pairs of gears in the middle are moved one way or the other on the shafts to engage the various gears. So when they're moved as far as they can that way, on the innermost click, That'll be first gear. Next one out is neutral. Next one along second. Next one third. Next one top. So that's how they work. Basically these two pairs of gears. One is a solid one piece item. The other is actually two separate gears held together by this fork which uh, moves two of them at once and that one piece double gear as well backwards and forwards along the shafts and that's what gets you gears from first through to top and back. So hopefully that might explain how that lot works. Now what happens, in order to move this inside the gearbox, the inner casing on the inside, here's one from an earlier machine but you can see we've got this here. Now that where I've got my finger represents the bit that engages with this. When that moves in an arc, it moves this through the various clicks and into the various gears in neutral. And uh, I've got here a very similar one. This is actually out of a Crusader, um, so it's not the exact part you'd find in a bullet gearbox, but it's essentially the same, just the bullet one is longer. And this goes through the casing, which, if we look at this gearbox, you can see the end of the square shaft there. So that fits in there, something like that, and as this shaft is turned, that moves your gear operator and selector through the gears. So, uh, so far so good, and operating this <laughs> is this lot here, which again we can see is all set up in situ on this gearbox. We'll have a look inside this in a moment, I'll just put it there for now. We'll see, oops, I think that lot's just sprung apart. I'll put that back down there in a moment. This lot is a throwback to the old hand change gearboxes. And um, I can demonstrate actually from this, which is where we get the neutral finder pedals, as you can see on this one. The neutral finder pedal fits on this square shaft. But you can see that you can actually 
use this in a one down three up pattern. I'm in first gear now. Click to neutral. Next click second. Next click third. And finally fourth. Then back down we go and get third. Second. And we go through. Actually we have gone through neutral and into first there. So one click back. There we are, we're in neutral. So that's your four gears working and you can always check on one of these gearboxes if they're not selecting properly you're not getting all the gears or they're jumping out of gear or whatever after or during a gear change if you want to know if all the gears are working properly and engaging correctly put a little spanner on this shaft or something rock the bike backwards and forwards if it's a complete bike and just go through the gears count the clicks and if you get all of the clicks and all of the gears and everything inside that gearbox is working as it should so there's no problem but what we've got to consider is that we want the clicks i.e. when that spring loaded plunger engages with the notches on the gear operator we want precision selection and movement of that lot which brings us to this here. Now when I select the gears using the gear lever pedal, the observer among you may notice there's no kickstart shaft on this anymore. It was cut off because this is actually an early um, gearbox from our 350 racer when it was a bit of a tail end Charlie but that doesn't really matter. Anyway, on that square shaft first gear is down but when we come to the gear lever, first gear is up, and you can see why, because of the way this slot moves and interacts. So I'm going to pull the gear lever up now for first gear, and if we keep an eye on that, as I turn the main shaft, where the clutch would be, we've got click, and we're in first gear. And there's a sprocket, turning with the main shaft, if you want to look at the back there. So that's first gear, I hooked it up for first. What we don't want, if you notice, there's no further movement there, it just clicked into first nicely and that's all you get. Now moving down, one gentle click brings us back into neutral. The gearbox sprocket now is not spinning with the main shaft. And the next click is going to be for second gear. And if we see, sometimes you've got to spin the sprocket and the main shaft against each other to get the gear because it's, uh, there we are, click. Now, the click happened I can't press that gear lever any further down. The click happened that coincides with the gear lever running out of movement, and that's how you want it. You don't want any extra movement on that gear lever because if you've got extra movement, what you're trying to do is you're trying to move this a little bit further past its notch with the spring loaded plunger, and that's when you can go past the gear, overshoot if you like, or if it doesn't go far enough don't quite get it and you'll jump into a neutral as well so it's very important to have the clicks at the gear changes coinciding with the last bit of gear lever travel like that we've just got the click as a lever I can't move that any further and I'm now in third let it come back reset itself the next one will be top there's nowhere to go after top gear anyway but that's the lever run out of movement so now I'm going to come back down from top into third click and that's it I can't move that any further if I could it might go beyond third and hit a neutral between third and second gear let go do it again and any moment now we should have yeah we've clicked into second gear actually and one more gentle move brings us back to neutral so what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we get our clicks from the gear changes at the same moment that the gear lever comes to a stop in both directions um, and it's also worth pointing out this aluminium cap here whether you can see it I'll get the torch actually can be fitted either way round but if we look here there's just a little bit scalloped out there and that's to allow 
this to move as far as it needs to. If that was fitted the wrong way round, there wouldn't be quite as much movement there and you probably wouldn't be able to do the upward gear changes so nicely. So it's vital to get that the right way around as well. So, next we need to know how do we get the clicks to sort of land and stop where we want them to. I'll just get this. basically boils down to all this. What we see there is what we have in here. It's quite scary isn't it really? Um, let's see if I can sort of hold this. We've got that there and I need to move that round a bit there. there we are. Basically there's the back plate we can just see get my torch again. You see that plate at the back there? That is this one. And I'll just drop the, uh, the ratchet as well. And see how the holes there, the bolt holes are elongated, they're not just round and fixed. You can slacken these pillar bolts off and you can move that. You can rotate it very slightly one way or the other. And what that does centralizes the ratchet mechanism and the spring behind it which centralizes it all because that fits in there like that so when you move this round on those elongated slots that spring there moves with it and the post and that engages with this here on the quadrant and moves that around very slightly so you're shifting the whole starting point of the mechanism very slightly one way or the other in order to centralize it and what you end up doing if you're not careful if you move it too much one way you'll take away say um, the ability to select upwards through the gears as much as you need to and you'll find changing down you'll go too far and go past them so what you've got to do is you've actually got to bring that to a point where as I've demonstrated, you run out of movement on the gear lever in either gear change direction just as the gears click nicely into place. And you can get that just by, you have to slacken these two nuts obviously, as they act as lock nuts. And then behind is those pillar bolts there, you just slacken them and then that enables you to move this. But it also, if you can just see it, it also affects the position and the starting point of the actual pedal mechanism as well because there's another spring behind there which engages with this let's see if I can show you here I've got one here let's try and put that on there what you end up with is something like that with the spring there behind this lot and that centralizes this arm here so when the whole lot moves one way or the other this whole pedal mechanism would move up or down with it as well. So basically what we're trying to do to get a clean accurate gear change is position this lot right where when the gear lever runs out of travel in one direction. If I can get it again, let's see. It should be going into the second gear. I hope. <laughs> Bear with me. I'll take that a bit. There we are. See how we run out of movement of the pedal at the same time the little indent plunger goes click into the notch it's changing up and changing down there's no excess movement in either direction but there's adequate movement in both directions and if you can get that sorted it might take a bit of patience and take a little while a good way to do it if you've got the bike intact and the wheels on and the chain everything it's all in working order but you've got this cover off is if you can put the machine on the centre stand prop it up so the back wheel can be turned or if it's on the bike lift and you can actually rotate the back wheel backwards and forwards and move the gear lever and feel for those clicks and when say, I get a lot better 
if this was in a complete bike and I was turning the wheel. There you are, I've gone into second gear. But you can feel where it goes into gear and any excess movement, it's gone click and I'm holding the gear lever there. If I could move that down a little bit further and then let go and it spring back, then I know that it's going too far in the upward change direction. Likewise, changing down, if it goes beyond where the mechanism clicks into gear, there's a little bit of springiness afterwards, then it's going too far on the downward side and you're probably not going to go far enough to get good clean upward gear changes. And I think that's probably about all I need to say about this. I've covered the lot, except for the neutral finder pedal, which works on that square shaft. And basically, what would happen, I could probably demonstrate with this spanner, if I put the spanner on the shaft there, and I'll go up through the gears, What happens is, we're now in top gear. We're coming down through the gears, if we can, back into third, back into second, neutral, and finally first. Well, on the neutral finder pedal, you can get all the gears, but you can't get first gear, because this little device here stops the pedal going down, reaching down far enough to put it into first. And you can actually adjust the stop. If you slacken off this little bolt here, you can rotate that larger nut and it's on an eccentric and it will, as you turn it, it will rise and fall and you can adjust that so that when you press this, it will come out of fourth, third and second and stop before it goes into first and that's how you get neutral. And that's working direct on that shaft there, which like I say is a throwback really to the hand change gearbox designs. And um, that's basically how it all works. So hopefully, perhaps it might help people understand how these gearboxes work and how they select their gears and how they're adjusted and so on. That's the inner workings of that lot there, you see. It's all rather crude, but it can actually be set up to work very accurately and give very good precise gear changes, even if not at racing speeds at uh, comfortable and rather fast cruising speeds at least. You certainly don't have to have a gearbox full of neutrals and missed gears and over selecting and under selecting. They can be set up well and uh, hopefully this will help people to do so and uh, explain how they work. So there we go, the Albion 4 speed gearbox as used by the uh, Redditch factory on Enfields and the Indians until very recently. Not as bad as people make out and they can be made to work.